Uh, yes, right. Hello and welcome back to the booth here at Card Kingdom's Legacy Preservation Series 1K Magic Tournament. Legacy, yeah. Legacy Magic Tournament. <laughs> yep. I'm your host, Josh Monks, joined again by Chris Furterer. That's me. I'm Chris Furterer. <laughs> and we got another round of magic for you guys. I know that's why you're here for us, so we're going to head down to the match now. So I, I might have cherry-picked this match. I'm sure you did. Um, we got the Giant Slayer on camera. We got James the Giant Slayer playing against Tinfins, which I love this deck. I, I've played it I've played it a couple of times. Uh, it's miserable to play, but it is it is so fun to watch. Absolutely. <laughs> it is a great deck. Uh, it's and very fragile, but I think it's great in a metagame where you're expecting a lot of people to play Storm yeah. and a lot of fair decks, because you just bend those decks over your table. Yeah, you yeah. just crush and, them. Well, the, and the great thing is James, much like Alion, has been playing this deck since, like, well... James hasn't been playing it since Threshold was a deck, but he, ever since he got into Legacy, this is the deck that he has been playing. So yes. he's very, he is very skilled at this deck. He told me that at the first time he ever played Legacy, his friend lent him this deck. He did very well with it and said, huh, you know what, I'm just going to play this deck forever. Yep. And, you know, that's what he does. He's slowly building Storm, but I've never actually seen him play it in an event. <laughs> uh, so... The great thing about James is I, I remember when he first started getting into Legacy, this was before he graduated high school and was still using like uh, his like summer job money and stuff like that to slowly build into Legacy. And I was like, wow, James is really going the distance with building this deck and he finally finished it and he was so incredibly pumped about finally having a Legacy deck. Absolutely. Um, and, and the funny thing about James is he used to come up to me all the time, Chris, do you want to play a game of Legacy? Chris, do you want to play a game of Legacy? So I'd be like, all right, sure, James. And slowly over the course of time, like I would just decimate him and destroy him and he just couldn't beat me and he'd get so frustrated. And then it started the... The, the coins started to turn onto the other side where James just like casually beat me in tournaments and I'm just like damn it he got very very good in this deck and Rug Delver is a deck that rewards you for knowing every single deck inside and out so it might not be the best deck to start playing Legacy with mm -hmm. but it's a great deck to play if you know the format and you know the deck well oh of course yeah. James has after spending two or three years playing this deck day in day out every two weeklies a week plus every single you know big weekend event, every single GPT, everything like that. He's gotten good at the deck. He knows the pieces inside and out. He knows how the other decks operate and how to operate versus them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're, we're good, we're good. Uh, if you want to get in, sure. So, uh, it looks like Jordan Isaka just showed up. He's going to step in the booth for me, so I will be back next round. Yep. Oh, man. Alright. Yeah. What's going on, oh, guys? Oh, man. How's it going, Chris? <laughs> oh, man. Ooh, we got the, the legendary... James the Giant Slayer. <laughs> James so, the Giant Slayer. While you were gone, we oh, uh, man. I, I might have cherry picked this match. I, okay. I like I like watching James play Rug. Yeah. Uh, he's got that sweet 3D altered Delver that he got at a GP. Um, <laughs> sure. and he's playing against Axel, who's playing Tin Fins, which I this deck is sweet. Oh yeah, Tin Fins. Tin Fins is a savage one. I I love the idea of Tin Fins, where it's just like I like Storm and I like Reanimator. Let's just shove them together until yeah. like, they start mashing together enough, and you just clean up the blood, and you're good. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's right. And he also has I mean he also has cards as insane as uh, as Emrakul coming out of the graveyard, yeah. which most certainly usually does not do. Yeah, he being right. able to shallow grave it. Oh it yeah, so insane, right? And if you actually look at James Johnson's hand, he has a card that's very good in his matchup. He's got a spell snare, yeah, actually, which is very powerful. It's going to be able to hard counter any of the reanimation. Animation smells that Axel is going to go ahead and cast on his crystal ramp, right? Uh, not necessarily all of them, because typically, so if we're looking at Axel's, oh, okay. Axel's okay. deck, uh, he's also running, uh, I believe, usually these decks. Oh. Oh, he's playing a sweet one of Pull from Eternity. Pull from Eternity. Which is going to be oh, awesome. Oh, yeah, that, that card's a spicy one for sure. Interesting. He's not playing any just regular reanimates. Yeah. Which I've, I've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of Tin Fins decks play okay. regular reanimates. Okay. Maybe the version that I'm, I'm uh, familiar with. Is uh, is not the, is not the mainstream one, perhaps, or uh, I guess it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting because I think that the spell snare. I, I've actually told James Johnson a couple times that I'm not a huge fan of spell snare. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's good in certain matchups, it's good in certain scenarios, but he likes it a lot, and uh, he's been playing the deck uh, Rug Delver for a long time. So oh, yeah, yeah. yeah we, so. we were talking about that before he showed up. That James has been playing this deck since his first since he he put his first big toe into the into the pool that is Legacy. That is that is certainly true, right? And and he certainly knows all the interactions. You know, uh, one of the really powerful things that you can do when you're playing Rug Delver is when he casts Days and he returns a land to his hand, he actually can go ahead and shuffle that land back with Brainstorm, right? Yeah. That was one of those one of the, the big, big epiphanies that we went ahead and discovered and he, he and I have talked about historically, right? And if you look at the way, you know, he's, manu he's maneuvering the deck, he's 
he's uh, piloting the deck in a very in a quick fashion, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an orientation that's going to allow him to be able to trap his opponent's mana and beat up on him pretty hard. Yeah, of course, like, I mean, especially with one of these decks that doesn't really play fair, you want to get in as much beats as you possibly can. That's right. And also be able to have answers for their beats when they decide to, to turn it around on you. That's absolutely true, right? Being able to, I mean, it's a little hard to answer the uh, the Tinfin deck once they've gone off, but at the same time, you need to know what cards are interest, are important to counter and important to stop. Cards yeah. like Children of Coralis, if you can stop it, that'd be a great one to stop. Oh, yeah. St right. Stifle the Children of Coralis. Oh activation. yeah, that's exactly right. The, uh, exactly the sweetness right. of Axel's deck is Axel is playing uh, four of Unmasks and four of Soul Spikes. He's playing which he can exile the Grizzlebrand, then pull from Eternity the Put Grizzlebrand. The Hello. Put in the oh yeah. my gosh, that's pretty intense. It looks like he's got Emrakul in his grip though. Yeah. Certainly a 15-15 monster, really good when you have Show and Tell, really good when you have Sneak Attack. Tinfin's not really a deck that plays a lot of those. Yeah. Can't yeah. can't imagine, right? Wow. So it looks, I and mean, I mean, on top of that, you know, like, I guess uh, Tinfin doesn't really have access to uh, cards like Careful Study. Mm -hmm. They actually run a little bit light on the actual reanimation cards, the, the, the actual targets. What is going on? That is a Soul Spike. Oh, we got a reader. Uh, that deck is sweet, uh, or that, sorry, that card is sweet in, uh, in a deck that is called uh, Nourishing Lich. A mod Which is yeah, that's right. Sweet, <laughs> that's right. I, I've I've seen and heard about this card, this deck before. Uh, it's I believe it was not necessarily pioneered, but really uh, represented by Chase Hansen, uh, a legacy a legacy <laughs> powerhouse player in and of himself. Oh wow! And that's going to go ahead. and Did he just pitch four, two cards? The Soul Spike. How does that work? So you know? Soul Spike is uh, exile two black cards. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> deal four to a creature, gain four life. But if you have Lich in play, Nourishing Lich, yes. then the four cards that you would gain actually then just draw four yeah. cards. Then it's right. lo lose four, which you can't because, well, you have, Lich, you have Lich in play. Yeah, you have Lich in play. And draw four cards, which is, I feel like that's pretty good. Yeah, drawing four yeah. is certainly not bad. And if you look at James Johnson's hand, James Johnson actually has a pretty a pretty legitimate clock. Oh, he's going to get him for four right now. Him playing out the Delver ahead of playing out the, uh, the Nimble Mongoose is really going to give him that extra pressure and that extra damage. Yeah. Spell, Snare, Force of Will, all cards that he wants to have. That you ponder, ponder. Oh, that Ponder is going to be great. And he's yeah. pretty excited to cast that. You know, the faster he fills up his graveyard, the, the more damage he's going to be able to get and the, the quicker the clock he has. You notice that he actually has that Wasteland. That Wasteland can get pointed at his own lands, yeah. right? And that's really going to help him out. It's going to give him uh, six damage this turn if he it does incline to do so. But it looks like he's just going to go ahead and keep... Oh, that's a Force and and a Daze. Yeah. That's really hard for the Tinfin's deck to fight through. Yeah. And one of the things that's interesting about the Tinfin's deck is before they actually go off, their deck's kind of clunky. Yeah. You know, they've got Dark Ritz and Intombs and Shallow Graves and it's like, what? Oh, there's the speaking of Intombs. <laughs> yeah, yeah speaking of Intombs, that's absolutely that's right. Days. Yeah, certainly going to have a Daze on that. Well, and so that's, I mean, this is, this is kind of one of those weird spots for James. James is going into this blind. Uh, likely, he sees an unmask and then he sees an entomb, and he's. It, I, I don't feel like he has a, a full idea as to what is going on on the other side of the board. You know, the, the one card that really might tip him off is he saw the tendrils of agony get pitched the soul spike. That's okay. Yeah. Right. There we go. So you know, if you have a an entomb and a tendrils of agony, and I'm looking, I'm sitting over there going like, "Well, what the heck is this?" Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> That being said, you know, Axel's, yeah, it looks like yeah. Axel just goes ahead and picks it up because it was really hard for him to resolve spells through those days with only one, one swamp in play. Yeah, I mean, and James had, what, three counter spells in hand? Yeah. Over the it, course of, like, forces and, and spell snares and Yeah, whatnot. and on top of that, he had the lightning bolt too, right? Yeah. And one of the things that's really important when you're playing against Tinfins is that their life total is threatening in intervals of seven. Yeah. Right, so your first hurdle is you want to get them below 14, yep. so they can't draw 14 cards, and then you want to get them below 7, right? But anytime they're in a life total in between those numbers, it's kind of negligent. Yeah. Right. That way, that you know they can go ahead and draw seven before they attack with Crystal Brand. I try to set up a kill with uh, discarding Emrakul when attacking for twenty one or twenty two. Math. Sure. And then, <laughs> or like if they go ahead and draw, you know, fourteen cards and they play Children of Corlys, they can go ahead and sack that, gain back a bunch of life, right? Yeah. And they can keep on going and keep on comboing, right? Yeah. And so that that is one of the sweet things about uh, about ten fans is just. Do you like gaining? Do you like gaining life and drawing cards? Right. That's those are great, like those yeah. are two fantastic things that's that people like question. to do in Magic. Yeah, that's an absolutely great question. And on top of that, you know, when you go really deep and your opponent plays a card like Children of Corlys Cor Cor against you, it's like I don't even know. I mean, like I know what it does because of Tinfins. Yeah. But if you were to tell me before this deck came around, what does Children do? I've been like, 
I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But, yeah, but all right. The, these, both these players are going to go ahead and sideboard now. Rug Delver, I, I gotta believe, is going to bring in. Man, maybe he's got he's got uh, going into this. He's got a he's got a couple of submerges, but obviously you're not going to be bringing in those. No in. green mana. Yeah. Um, you're probably going to be bringing in the one of surgical. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, most certainly the Vendillion click. At, you know, playing at instant speed's important, yep. right? You can click your opponent end of turn. Yeah. Um, you can click your opponent in response to a tomb or in response to dark ritual. Yeah. Uh, he bring might bring the Fluster Storm. Yeah, Fluster Storm is most certainly he'll br certainly bring in the Sulfur Elemental, and the yeah. reason why is because he wants to be able to play a threat down without essentially spending mana. If he spends mana at the end of his opponent's turn, right, like he can get to a situation where he can play Sulfur Elemental untap and then he'll have mana to play to play a combo game. Yeah. That being said, I'm gonna kind of go into something really interesting about Tin. Oh, oh, I'll cover it. Tinfins in a little bit later, but you can actually Tinfins can combo at the end of their opponent's turn, based purely off the fact that Shadow Grid's an instant. Yeah. yeah so yeah. you can play it. You can play it at my opponent's end step, right? My opponent, my opponent can decide if they want to counter it or not. If they don't, I'll draw 14, and then I'll win the next turn. Yeah. Well, right. And the, the interesting thing about Tinfins is you can also kind of pseudo go off during the cleanup step, which like normally you don't get priority during the cleanup. But like, all right, so I discard down, pitch my 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 uh, Emrakul, and then the right. trigger goes in the stack, and you're like, wait, 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 there's stuff going on in the cleanup. What's going right. on? Right, right, right. The trigger's occurring, yeah. and we can go ahead and overwrite that trigger, right? And then all of a sudden, I shallow grape my Grissabrand's or my, my Emrakul's in play, and it'll stay in play. I'm breaking all the rules. Until the next, until yeah. my next turn, right? Or, yeah. like, you can do it to block. Yeah. Very crazy. Yeah. And uh, so, Axel here, he's got uh, two of not of this world, which I've seen hardcast before. Oh, Which my is God. legit. <laughs> That's the seven mana Eldrazi counter? Is yeah, that correct? If, if, if something targets you, no, some, if something targets a permanent that you control, that has like a power greater than seven or something like that, then you get a counter yeah. for free or right. something. Right, it it'll stop cards like Karakas. Yeah. It'll stop cards that'll kill Grisobran or exile Grisobran. Um, but yeah, he's also got he's got abrupt gaze, which you can deal with uh, some like Delvers and and Karma Voice. Right, yeah. or you can deal with a static answer like uh, uh, Containment Priest or something yeah. like that. Rest in peace. He's likely going to bring that in just in case there's like Graph Digger's cages. Certainly, certainly, and we'll probably see some from uh, from James Johnson. Um, there's uh, there's another a singleton pull from eternity. Sure, which is pretty sweet. Rip, duress, rip. which I'm believing those dresses are probably going to be coming oh, in to get rid of any counter spells. Yeah, problems. yeah. He's figure out what's going on with his opponent before he goes in combos. Yeah. City um, of Solitude. No, it's sure. Solitude. I, yeah, Solitude would certainly come in. I love that card. It's, I love that card so much. I play it in main. It's, sweet. <laughs> it's, just, it's a really sick one. And for those who don't know, you know, Silly of Solitude was kind of the OG anti blue blue deck, yeah. anti blue card. It's an enchantment. It says you can't play. Uh, in, you can play activated abilities and spells on your opponent's turn. Uh, yeah, green and one. No yeah, one, no right. one can play stuff on other people's turns. That's, right, that, and I think it's activated abilities too, right? Like yeah, you cannot, yeah. yeah, you cannot trigger like top. You can't rearrange top. Yeah, and it, like there have been, I, I play it main in uh, in Enchantress when I do decide to, to bring out the, oh. the sweet zero ones with Shroud. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because if somebody's like, cool, guess what? I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna rich import your sweet land that has like a bunch of wild growths on it. And you're like, all right, cool. Well, I'm going to also play the City of Solitude, and you're never doing that again. You literally can never <laughs> do that. Yeah, it's yeah. not possible. Oh my oh. gosh, is this a turn? This one? is. Uh, I mean, we're seeing a really explosive play from Tin Fins. You see a dark with in an in-tomb right away. And James Johnson, he's going to force... I, I got to believe he's going to give him the force check. He, hopefully you know? he's got the force. Yeah. The thing is, though, I, I got to believe you kind of want to force... You kind of want to force that into him if you can. I mean, one of the things that Tin Fins doesn't... Does, Tin Fins doesn't really run a lot of ways to get cards into the bin. But they run a whole bunch of ways to yep. get cards there we go. out of the bin. Alright, so Grizzlebrand's coming out. And that's happening. Ooh. <laughs> well. Alright, how many you want to draw? And James I gotta believe is James, in an awkward spot. James is grooting because he knows he's toast, I think. Yeah. Alright, drawing seven. Seven cards is a little wide. Yeah. Um, seven cards of a deck that's a little awkward is still pretty good. You're right. also playing. But what you mentioned earlier is he's not below that 14 threshold. So That's right. Now we're That's now we're right. in the territory of drawing 14 and not Cer really caring. Certainly. And what's kind of interesting about it is if he goes ahead and cracks with Gristlebrand, uh, and he can actually draw 21 cards, including cracking with Gristlebrand, mm -hmm. and when he pedals out Children of Corlys, he's going to gain 21 life. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. that's a lot. And That's uh, we, I mean, um, he, he hasn't played a land for the turn. So. Uh, or he played his Bayou, right? For, this is turn oh, this, one. Oh, this is still yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, never mind. So, yes. James, so. James Johnson has actually proceeded to go to the uh, head in head in hand, head in hand <laughs> pose, right? Yeah. As he waits for his opponent. He's got his Delver play mat. That's a, I believe that's a custom Delver play mat. Or is that a, is that a flippy mat? Uh, I think that's one of the flippy mats. Right? Yeah. Signed by a lot of different people. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, Alex Cobb gonna go ahead and give karate, as they say in the business. All right, gaining seven more life. Ah, draw seven more cards. Sure. G giving karate is that, is that the technical term <laughs> for, for attacking? Absolutely. Yeah. And James Johnson's gonna roll the dice a little bit. Man drops to Alex Cobb drops to six. Oh, jeez, he's got no, no child. No children of Corlys. He's got a few cards in hand. That's a Mox Diamond, though. Yeah. Certainly a card that you want to have while you're going off. He's looking for the land. I'm sure he'll find a land to pitch the Mox Diamond. Oh, of course, yeah. Right. And then what happens so, now? I mean, here yeah, you throw out a bunch of unmasks and just empty James's hand and then pass? I think, I think that's the line here. I mean, he's just got so much action. Alex essentially has two lands in play and a Lotus Petal, and James Johnson hasn't even played yet. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh. Uh, I wonder if he plays Dark Petition. Yep, so there's a... Oh, there's, oh, a, there's a Soul, soul spike. spike. And that's going to get him above seven. Oh, there seven. you go. That's yep. going to get him above seven. James instantly reading. I love how the Soul Spike's foil. It's like, <laughs> you need to know this card, this card matters. This card is the business. Yeah, you're about to get business time. F6. <laughs> okay. F6. James Johnson has has tapped out of, of life. Yeah, he's... Uh, I think he's at the point where he's just like, all right, it's your turn. But James Johnson, being the gentleman that he is, uh, is letting him... Letting him yeah. dirt all over there. You have uh, to. We got oh, the child. We got the child of Corliss, and yep. I think it's going to be over in short order here. Yeah. Um, uh, sack that. I don't know why. Sure. Oh. So the scary thing is Axel is in uh, bolt category or bolt territory. So if he's if James has the sweet uh, Simeon spirit guide bolt, I guess then. Sure. Yeah. He <laughs> could certainly die uh, in response. Battle for Dark Rit, Cabal Rit. Yeah, James Johnson's just doing due diligence here, just making sure his opponent goes through the, goes through the steps. Uh, looks like he's got a bunch of black. He'll have, uh, I think he'll have, like, six black. Uh, so he went, he went three, and then up uh, plus three, so he's at six. What's that? Is that? I don't even know what that card does. Which one? Uh, <laughs> I have six. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, if you don't have, I mean, there was a force wheel check by Alex Cobb. One of the things that you have to do when you're playing tin fins is you just have to know when to go for it. Yeah. You know? I mean, you, turn one typically is a good time to go for it, especially right, with this deck, yeah. because this deck, unlike storm decks, isn't one of those things where you just kind of go all in. Worst case scenario with this deck is if you don't go off, you can still kind of go off the next turn because right. you don't really need to throw a bunch of cards at, at your combo to win. Right, your combo. I mean, you, 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 it's like it's kind of a it's kind of a deck based off of phases. Yeah. Where is my Gristlebrand? Is he in the bin? Okay, well, any any uh, reanimation card I draw off the top, I can go ahead and cast on Gristlebrand. Yeah, and then we're good to go. We're in business. Well, that's the thing. Like Axel is playing uh, eight eight of those reanimation spells, and so sure. If if your if your your combo gets disrupted on the first turn, the second turn you got a pretty good likelihood of right. hitting another one. Assuming it doesn't stop the uh, the entomb, right? Exactly. Yeah. That, and that's certainly the the one bottleneck that uh, I think a lot of players don't fully understand. If you can force will the uh, the entomb, pretty powerful. Oh yeah. Pretty, yeah. Of course. Kind of spot you want to be at. Well, that's the thing is he he. Yeah, once that once that entomb is is countered, then you either have to hope to find your target to be able to pitch into the graveyard with cards like Unmask, where you can unmask yourself and pitch right, it or whatever. Right, that's right, that's right. Or, or, force, or like thought sees yourself. Yeah, right. and, well, and the awkward part is if you've already attempted to get to that point of like being able to reanimate and also be able to Shallow Grave, you already have so many cards taken out of your hand where you can't naturally discard. You're that's not, right. You're not gonna be able, you, that's absolutely You can correct. last another four turns, then sure, you can discard and then hope, but right, right, it's, right. it's rough for you. Certainly, right, and that's kind of like, you know, it's kind of the, one of the issues about Tin Fins being a very explosive, you saw it being explosive on turn one. It's also kind of clunky sometimes, you yeah. know, it also is going to have a tough time getting there. So this deck, I've seen, I've seen a, a much more clunkier version of Tin Fins, where they oh take boy. out all of the the tendrils, so you can't win via that way. You have to win if they take out all of your all of your Emrakuls and your and your Grizzle Brands or whatever from your deck. So the surgical you, extraction. Well, yeah, yeah. Then you have to worry about okay, I just have to keep flipping. Uh, well, typically they, they get rid of all the Grizzle Brands, oh, but you have, you have them to, for in chunks of seven. Yeah, you have to. Oh well, my God. <laughs> either that, or you have to keep recurring your Dark Rituals until you get up to 15 mana to hard cast an Emrakul. You don't have your Tendrils to back up. Now, that being said, every time you, you, you loop with Children of Corliss, you're essentially losing more and more life yeah. that turn, right? Yeah. So, looping is hard, but they probably play more Children of Corliss in the, with the understanding that more Children of Corliss equals more cards to yeah. draw, right? And then I'm going to draw... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gain so much life. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So now we have... Okay, so now, you know... James Johnson got turn one. That's too bad, but that's just part of magic. It's part of legacy, right? And it looks like he's looking at a card. He looks like he has a daze and a force of will. He's pretty excited to keep. He's missing some pressure, though. You know, he has the lance. He has the disruption. Yeah. He's missing the way. You know, the way to kill his opponent, and he's thinking about it. Yeah. 
Alex and, Cobb. And Axel's got a pretty good one. Like, his his hand has a lot of stuff to be able to set up. Uh, I don't know if he's got a turn one. I know yeah. he's got a Shallow Grave and a Dark Ritual in there, plus a Soul Spike. Uh, plus a Goryu's, duress. It's like a Goryo's Vengeance all the way at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, land. He's, he's so. it. Oh, he, he yeah. had one bite. One by you? But that's interesting. Yeah. Okay, so maybe he was a little afraid to go go quote unquote go for it again. Yeah. Thinking that his opponent would be, you know, kept a relatively powerful rip. Or a wasteland. Right. <laughs> or, yeah. or a wasteland. <laughs> and everybody knows that James Johnson, well, he's always got it. Always, yeah. Always got I'm it. I'm surprised right. he didn't always had it last year. Oh. He has a Is that oh, a vortex? That is an interesting Can't card. Gain life. Little slow. I mean, turn three versus fins. Yeah. I mean, their kill range is usually around two. Well, so what it looks like is James is is hoping to have enough enough disruption to hold him off until he can get that on turn three. And right. It's like okay, gain your life off of children. Doesn't do you a whole lot. That's so. right. That's right. Yeah, his life total certainly can't go in the upper direction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that being said. I mean, he can still essentially draw 14 and try to win like that. It does make his deck quite a bit more clunky. Yeah. One of the big power power plays that Tim Finns will run is, you know, they'll play, they'll they'll, they'll get Gristlebrand out, they'll attack, they'll draw 21, they'll play Child, they'll draw 21 again. Mm -hmm. It's hard to lose after that. Yeah, I mean, you draw 42 cards. Like, what do you, yeah. how, how do you lose? My neck's in my hand, what's up? Yeah, well, yeah exactly, right? Uh, and he's, he's going to mulligan, yeah. mulligan again. He's going to mulligan again. That's okay, though, because, I mean, like, Tin Fins, it, it, as far as being able to mulligan, this deck can actually mulligan down. I mean, if you have two cards, if you have Entomb, Entomb, uh, Gorio's Vengeance, and a couple lands, right, you can still run your combo. Mm -hmm. That being said, he's not very resilient versus the Rogel deck. Right? Of course, right? yeah. Yeah. And Axel, so the, the awkward thing about Axel is with that Sulfuric Vortex, it also shuts off Soul Spike, so he can't, like, get that, that extra bit yeah, that of, extra of life, life out. Yeah. Right, that's correct. But I don't, I don't, I don't, know, if, uh, I don't know if Axel is expecting that. I, I, don't, I don't think he is. I think it's a, it's a pretty interesting play. It's an interesting angle from James Johnson. Oh, those abrupt gates, though. Uh, well, no lands. Yeah, and... It looks like... Geez. It looks like... And then two, maybe a second in tomb, uh, two abrupt K's. <laughs> what is James doing? Letting him know that he hasn't mulliganed. <laughs> I mean, James that, is like, I got seven. The mental war games. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, yeah. So I How see many five. do you have? I got seven. Judge, is card advantage good? Judge is my hand good. I mean, that being said, I mean, James Johnson could also, I mean, he could play Brainstorm and then just Fate Seal himself, right? Or like, or like play Brainstorm and then Brainstorm lock himself. And it could be tough. Okay. Looks, there, looks like there was two duress, oh, uh, a reanimate, two abrupt decays, and a, a dark ritual. We might see a really derpy game. Is James <laughs> does not have another land, and he has a brainstorm <laughs> right now. It could it could derp. He could derp hard. Yeah. He's he's shuffling furiously right Ni now. Neither of them have threats. They both have answers. That's which, true. <laughs> oh, he hits the land. Always. Oh, and there's Johnson. oh, and there's mongoose. So yeah. So we, we got a goose and also disruption. So. Worst case scenario, you get there with the goose for a bit. Here's one of the things that I've always t talked to James Johnson a little bit about. You see the land that he has out there right now. Mm -hmm. That land taps your green. Yeah. If he plays his fetch land and he wants to play goose right now, well, he's not getting another green mana. Yeah. Guess what's going to be really hard to cast if he wants to cast it with double green? Yeah, yeah. So through vortex, yeah. right? Yeah. That being said, if I mean James obviously didn't have a choice of what his first. Oh, actually, he did have a choice of what his first yeah. land was. Should his first land have been a Volcanic Island? Volcanic into Brainstorm, I think that makes Volcanic sense. into Brainstorm, and then ha draw into the, the second fetch, and then play Nimble Mongus on turn two. Yeah, I feel like I feel like if one of the cards in your hand has red red in its casting cost, you should go with a Volcanic the first. I, 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 com I completely agree. And then your second land is, is Tropical Island, and then your third land, in that case, would be another Volcanic. Yeah, because right? at the time when he cast the Brainstorm, he didn't have the, he didn't have the Goose. I, I, he might have had the Goyf. I don't know if he actually had the Goyf in his opening hand. I don't, right. But... Still, it's... Oh. Oh, that was no, an aggressive play. No rock for you. That was an aggressive play. But I think it was one that was necessary based off of... I mean, James Johnson can afford to, to bleed out some resources. His opponent isn't even making land drops. Yeah, and, and the rough part about Axel is he hasn't played any lands, so James knows that he has... He's, yeah. He's limited on yeah. being able to produce mana. He literally knew that he just drew that Lotus spell. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, he yeah. knew that. Oh, and there's the land. Bayou, okay. The unfortunate thing is James saw a waste on top. That's right. So did he shuffle it away? I'm uh, not certain. He might have shuffled it away. He with shuffled his, it away. Yeah. yeah. But and he's cares? yeah he's still he's still missing still missing the third vault right. Uh, so three vortex looking a little awkward right now. But I guess he shuffled that one away. No, there's a he's, he, Oh, he's bouncing the bouncing the. Well, and James has a spell snare, so even if he can toss something into the bin, that's all right. Of his animation spells are all too. That so. is 100 percent true. The Mox Diamond. 
man, that Monk's Diamond is not looking too pretty. Yeah. No lands in hand, <laughs> you know. You got it, you just drew a blank. Oh yeah. I'll dress you. I'll dress you. Let's see oh, what you got over gonna, there. This, this is, is gonna, gonna be, hurt. This is gonna this is gonna be a he's gonna close his eyes and just pretend he didn't see what he saw. Look at no. <laughs> That's like double force. It's like look, double look, force. Look at, look at Alex. Look at Alex just leaning with his hand on his chin. Double force of will. Fluster storm. If you pause the stream real quick, you can see the you can see the moment where Axel dies a little bit on the inside. Yeah, he's just like, oh. <laughs> like it's double force, daze, fluster storm, and a brainstorm, and a spell snare. And, oh, uh, and uh, it's, yeah, spell snare hits every reanimation spell ever. Yeah, uh, yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> he, he like in, in his opening hand, he also has like a mystic tu a mystical tutor that has like a note <laughs> from wizards that says, "Nah, it's cool, dog." Just yeah. like that. <laughs> You know what? I think Axel could get a free him to Torok off, and he would still be in trouble. He, yeah. He could get a free him to... Oh, my... James is living the dream. I think he's got... As they say in the business, he has trips, yeah. or a set of force of wills. A set, if you were to use poker terms. Yeah. So, I mean, the mold of five versus triple force of will. So, I, I have a question. Uh, how did you sleep last night? Because I didn't have any dreams. Because I think James took all of our dreams. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's living my he, dream, your he dream, his dream. He has yeah. a He has a, a wasteland, too. <laughs> oh, no. Dude, if, if anybody can get a picture of James Johnson... Snap a picture right now. He might be he might be trying to poker face it, but I guarantee you on the inside he's grinning. Oh my gosh. Oh, he doesn't wasteland him. Yeah, why, why uh, add an insult to I don't know. Yeah. I would. I would just be a meanie pants about it. Man, I hope Axel rips Cabal Therapy and then can somehow pay for Flusterstorm. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, it's not going to work. James Johnson very smartly hides the extra. Oh, oh. Good, goodbye. <laughs> He looks. Axel looks down at the. Good at night. The, Good night. Uh, Crop rotation, or something. I don't know. Uh, uh, oh, entomb. In entomb. Oh. Here's a counter spell. Oh, Whatever. Oh, one no. of the counter. Oh, one no. of the many counter spells in my hand. Yeah, oh, that's so sad. Yeah, I think yeah. what really happened was Axel had those those really painful mulligans. Yeah, yeah. And those that's what hurt him the most. Lotus petal. Force of oil. <laughs> Why <Yeah>. not? <laughs> oh, oh, oh you were. I thought you were kidding. I thought I was kidding. <laughs> oh, my. and now there's an artifact in the bin. Oh, there's already artifact yeah, yeah. in the bin. Yeah. That, that's why Tarmo is so powerful right now. You know what's interesting is if he if you let him his opponent in tomb, it makes Tarmo the faster clock. I wonder yeah. if it would matter. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't, but it just looked it just looked. Well, I mean, so he, he's got oh. him on a turn, two turn clock right now. If he puts a creature in the bin, he he's still got him on a two turn right. clock. So exactly. I was just thinking like historically, right? Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think he did four swings of damage. Yeah. So yeah. Well, Axe is at two. It's either now or nothing. I and mean, here you soul spike the Goyf. Or no, I feel like you soul spike James because. <laughs> so I would just soul spike the goy. Just screw it, man. I'd like, soul spike myself. Be like, I'm out. <laughs> well, no, because like I, I guess like the the life the life loss and the life gain happened at the same time. Uh, yeah, there's a soul right. spike. You would still be in the game. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah, soul spike, sure. Oh man, get rid of one of those rough days. Oh, sure. Force. <laughs> there's the there's the third force of Yep, and I yeah, uh, that was that was tough. And James Johnson, you know, had the full grip. Yeah. Really I mean, like that's what you got to do with Rug Delver, though. You really have to have have one or two threats, and then just have a lot of disruption for your opponent. Yeah. So, of course, James Johnson navigated well. That being said, Axel also, you know, multi multiplied. He, yeah, so. Axel was having a, a real rough time there. Like he had he had the right things, but I mean, when you got a multi five, you got a multi five. So, like, mulling to five is yeah. rough. Mulling to five with no lands is even more rough. Even rougher, like, right? Hey, guys. Welcome back in the booth at uh, Car Kingdom's Legacy Preservation Series. We just watched a riveting game between Rug Delver and uh, Tin Fins. I, I, think that, uh, I think that turn two, or that turn one, uh, game two kill set uh, James up with enough karma to yeah. also just like that is, you're not playing magic if I can't play magic. That is that is correct and really what happened was I mean the turn one like James Johnson F6 he looked he was all slumped over in his chair yeah. and then it was almost the, the polar opposite the next yeah. game right like like the, the the gods of Card Kingdom were looking down and they yeah. were like they were too busy watching like something else and they kicked over to the stream and they're like oh James is losing give him all the gods <laughs> yeah, for next give him all the gods for next stuff uh, for the next game. 
Well, anyways, we're going to go ahead and power down for a little bit, and we'll go ahead and bring you guys another match. It looks like we have about 20 minutes left in the round, yep. and we'll try to go ahead and grab some more Legacy action. Yeah. Coming back to you in a little bit. Word.